Right, this little video is just a um, follow-up to the last one. Um, what I found with the little bit of router mat putting in the bottom, whilst the, it held it okay, um, what I found is that it's not, it wasn't holding it tight enough um, because they, um, it was because it was literally at the bottom and not sort of evenly spaced. So what I've ended up doing, um, I've had quite a few problems trying to get this thing to tighten up enough. So what I've ended up doing is I've stuck some little bits, just with some super glue, some bits of, um, uh, sort of neoprene, or uh, well, rubber. Um, what it is is a piece of an old inner tube, just cut down and just super glued on the inside of there. Right, and then I've done the same, essentially done the same for the um, inside the lid bit as well, um, which also um, helps it to grip it. And because it's all in an even sort of evenly spaced, it grips, it seems to grip the ball much, much better, which is good. I've also found that um, when I um, put my the, the, the lid onto it, um, the screws uh, with the nuts that I've drilled into the ho uh, put into the holes and um, I need I've needed to drill the hole down through the center of the the nut a little bit deeper because it had said drill it down I think it was like 20 mil um, and then you just hammer the nut down inside it well that again um, meant that when the bolts went in the nut uh, the bolt would hit the end of that 20 mil hole and it wouldn't go any further which wasn't um it wasn't good enough so i've had to then drill down through the center of the nut and that's giving it a little bit more sort of trouble so the bolt when it goes in it will go past the nut which is obviously much tighter um other little slight modifications i've had to do is i've taken a little bit off this surface here and then also a little bit of the surface on the underside just on the belt sander on the underside of the uh, the lid just so that when it scritches down on the ball um, instead of being now let's get these screws out of the way hang on just a sec right so when this um, whereas before when it was closed down the the gap here was right up tight now with the ball in it it's coming down in fact here's the ball that I've, I've just been started to do in the drilling I think I'm up to um, 20 I've done 20 holes now a few more to go around that side but as I was, I was finding that it was getting a bit stiff to move it around so um, what I, I thought the problem would be was the um, this you know the sawdust coming out the holes trapping inside here and it just made it really really stiff to move so sort that out so anyway um, that now fits in there quite nicely um, and put that in there and then when I put this the um, when I put the lid back on it as you can see that's now pushed in fairly tight there and I've got a gap um, which is there's a new line doesn't really matter at the moment but um, so when I put it in here I've then got a gap what I do is I bring the tail stock up with bring the tail stock up onto the ball onto the marked uh, markings um, so I'll, I'll use one of these you can see I've got a mark there I'll put that in the center I mean, I'll just set the camera up so it's actually on the arm then it'll be easier to do it all right so that's going in there this is going to go on like so this will then go up until I can then get the get the ball. This is fiddly, just doing this one-handed. Just bring that up. That's it. That's on. That then holds the ball in place. Just tighten this off. Tighten the tail stock off. That'll hold that in place. So the ball is now there. This will go on, and then what I'll do is I'll put the screws in. But I need both hands for that. Okay, so. Now I've tightened the uh, the ring uh, down tight onto the ball. The ball is nicely positioned and nicely tight. So I can remove my tail stock and the revolving centre out of the way. And then um, I've got a Jacob's chuck with a 3mm um, engineering centre center drill. That goes into here. Um, on, my, on my lathe, um, I've got a... 
um, is a ruler markings on the um, tail stock here as I drive it out, which is really good. However, a um, bit of a design flaw is um, this will auto eject the um, any tool, you know, um, uh, anything that's in there when it gets back, and it normally ejects it about 17 mil, um, which is absolutely no use whatsoever, so, certainly when you're drilling. Um, so I've basically modified my Jacob's chuck by chopping off the end. So it's it's shorter, you can see on that, it's shorter. But basically that then means when this goes in, I can wind this now all the way back to, send, to zero. So I'm gonna bring my um, drill up to the edge of the bowl, lock it off, um, make sure it's all, all good. Um, just turn my speed down. Um, now I'm gonna increase the speed up. Don't wanna be drilling too fast. Right, and now I'm just gonna wind this in. Just hold the chuck, just to make sure it doesn't spin. Um, just wind this in slowly until I get to a depth of 15 mil, which is there. So I can wind that back out again, back to zero. Move this out of the way slightly. Then I want to swap this drill. It's a little bit warm, but not too bad. This is why I'm sort of drilling it slowly so it doesn't get um, it doesn't get too hot. Put now this is a nine mil drill. Bring this up to just so the tip of it is almost touching or in line with the parallel to the outside surface of the ball. Then I'm going to wind this in just slowly. It's only taking a tiny amount off. Wind that to 15 mil. That's it. Wind to 15 mil. Take that out of the way. Move your tail thing off your tail stock out of the way. Then I have a flat platform um, which is set to the right height. So this, um, you can see this little tool here. It's going to focus. Right. This is just made out of an old uh, an old chisel that I had. Um, it's a it's got a four mil across the top here, uh, about thirty degree sort of chamfer on it, and it's just going to use it to go into the hole. So flat onto the flat onto the thing. I'm just going to increase my speed up a bit. Right. So I'm going to go in go in straight. So I touch the bottom. That's the bottom, and then just gently. Sort of stroke it along across the bottom and then just up the side slightly. Don't want to take anything off on the outside edge of that hole because it's that's the nine mil and that's what I need. I don't think it needs much of it. That's it. Stop the lathe, move this out of the way. And then something that like, um, I think John Lyles mentioned actually when he was doing these in the in the hall um, is on a piece of paper just mark off the hole that you've just done. A few more to go, but that's basically the process. It's just repetitive now to get all this sorted. Um, just to assist in moving the um, the ball. Once I release the screws, uh, the ball is still quite held tight in it. And just to help with alignment, I've just got a uh, a stick, a piece of stick, a bit of stick with some, it's actually got Velcro on the end, what I use for sanding. And I just found it just quite nicely. I can then move the, help sort of move the ball around as necessary just to get that fine adjustment. So that's what I'm doing. So I'll fast forward now to um, the last of the holes. And so I've now done the, the ball, 32 holes, um, quite repetitive and boring, so not exciting, but Here's now the finished finished ball. Um, just um, did some sanding sealer on it, sanded it down, get all the marks off it, um, and then uh, sanding sealer um, gone down through the grades, and then basically just buffed it up on the uh, buffing system. And it looks nice, and it just just it's great. Right, so that's that bit. Now the next thing to do is I've got to make the little pegs, the little pins. Um, pegs to go in each of these holes. Um, ideally you want to make the um, these 
these bits, these pegs, out of the same wood as the, the ball. Unfortunately, I haven't got any more of that wood. So, closest thing I can find is a bit of elm. So, it's going to have to be as good as that. So, um, what you need is 12 pieces, uh, 75 long, about a half an inch square-ish. Um, so, these, I've just marked the ends, um, found the centres roughly. Um, so, what I'm going to do, turn these between centres. I've got a little ring centre there on the drive end on the headstock and the step center it's my smaller step center on this end so i'm just going to um, turn these between that here's some that i've already done all this i've done already done um so i'm just turning them down to uh 12 mil diameter um because that will um they all fit into my uh chuck going to end up turning the rest of the process with the chuck and um, just on the tail stock um, using the center um, so right I will uh, crack on turn these into um, shavings see you in a bit So we've now made a load of these uh, little uh, cylinders. So the next stage is to mount them in the chuck. Get the right way around. Mount it into there, bring up the tail stock to the center that's obviously already in there. From earlier, just tighten that, tighten that off. Got to be careful with the um, the chuck in this. Um, you don't want to run it without a tail stock in uh, because the chuck is it will potentially come out of the uh, the headstock, which obviously you don't want. Right, so that's mounted in there. Um, the first thing what we need to do is um, what we're trying to make is like a little teardrop, and the teardrop um, part is going to be the widest bit. This is a nine mil hole in a piece of wood. Um, which is the same size as the drill I use for drilling the holes in the ball itself. Um, so my the, these little teardrops have got to be able to go through this um, through that hole. So I've set my dividers um, as such, so they should fit. So we don't want them to go in really, really easily, but also we don't want them to go in there really, really different, um, really, really hard because we it'll end up bruising around the actual entrance to the hole. Um, so to start with, what I'm going to do is um, get the lathe going. Okay, just using this, I'm just going to same as before, just a parting tool. Just get my the dimension of the widest part. on the camera over noise over noise yep, pop that one through okay so that's now at that, those points it's all the right size so I'm just going to just choose the rough and gauge just to out of these little bits of wood I can get three it all goes to plan. I can get three little teardrops out of them. The last one's a little bit close to the chuck. That's the majority of the wood taken away. Just go over it with a skew. Right, so next bit, <clears throat> it doesn't matter about having the hole in the end because that's going to be down inside the ball. So these dividers are set to 15 mil. So just touching one point only, that's 15 mil. With the parting tool, just go to the other side of that. Go down as small as you dare. Then all we're going to do is going to just carefully round off the bottom end of it. 
You can do all this with a scoot if you're feeling brave. I'm not feeling that brave. And then we just shaping this down. To a point. that's now pretty much there i haven't bothered sanding any of these they've actually come out okay and the fact that you can't actually do um when they're in the ball you, you can't really sort of handle them that much anyway so and the concept is it's um people think well how do you turn these because they're all inside the ball so you think actually it's been turned whilst it's still inside the ball which is obviously impossible so all we're just going down here now is just bring us down that's it one little one little teardrop hope you can see that put that to one side for a sec then whilst this is still going just using the edge of the parting tool in straight just take that little bit off a little use just use the point just to make a bit of a center and then we just bring this tail stock back up again You can obviously turn off the lathe if you're not confident about doing it. I've done several of these now, so I'm quite happy. Um, right, so there's my next one. We'll just go through this one again. That's the next one. See, you've got a little tiny hole in the end, but it doesn't matter at all. It'll come out quite nice. Right, the, the last part of the process is just inserting the, uh, the little teardrops, little pegs, what you call them, what you want, into the, into the ball. You see here that I've already got a few in. I um, wish I'd done the same as what I'd done before and just actually make a note of how many I've actually done. Um, but we're, we're getting there. So um, in some of these, some of the holes that I've drilled, um, I think I needed to go... Um, a little bit um, undercut it a little bit more so then they uh, the ball the you know the pins will fall out they do they do pop out as you twist it round some are tighter than others um, but it's that's the idea and actually this piece of the piece of wood that I've used this was a piece of so I think these were a piece of elm um, it looks like elm I think this is walnut it looks very walnutty um, and it's not a bad match actually um, but for any future just make sure that you your piece of wood that you are going to use for your ball is the same you've got the same amount of or well, you've got some lengths of wood for doing the, um, uh, the the little pegs so how do you get the pegs in well um, this is this board below here is just a piece of um, piece of MDF that I use on the uh, um, pillar drill just happened that one of these holes has got a bit of a point on it so i put that my little peg in there um in fact find a little hole find a hole find a hole that's going to go into the tight you know it won't go in like that so if i put that into over there and I'll adjust up he says mm, it doesn't want to go in I'll try a different hole or I'll try a different peg Some have been really easy to go in and some haven't. And this one is being a bit of a pig. Sounds like it's in, nearly in. That one is too tight. That's in. Unfortunately, that is, as I say, that was a little bit too tight. So that's not so good, that one isn't. So pain so anyway we'll go try put another one in see in there put it into that and then see that's how it should have gone the first one on the other upside down in again as i said to you the you need to make sure that the 
um, your holes, your undercut in each of the hole is big enough. Um, some of these aren't, but you get the general idea. I've still got loads more to do. Um, I've got another three. So I've got another five of them left to do. So um, that'll keep me busy for a bit. So I won't bore you with all that. Take these out of the way. One Singapore ball. Right, some things I've learned from this, okay, is um, the when, you, when you're when doing the undercutting on the holes, be a little bit more generous than what I have been on some of these. Um, some of the, whilst the majority of the, the spikes are moving as I move the ball around, there's a couple, well, that one for some example, is stiff. I can't move it at all. It's, I can't get it things you, you can't get the thing out again either so it's like once it's in it's in um some went in really nicely others were an absolute bit hard to go in but a little bit of sandpaper on some of them some of them seem to do the trick so there we have it done quite enjoyable little project um accuracy is the key with these um certainly when it comes to marking out all the holes initially the ball has got to be um, as close as you can to um, you know whatever you finished I mentioned in this case it was 62 mil so anyway there you have it I hope you enjoyed it and uh, now to do a lot of editing